to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola Jibade, and I've got my guest here with me today, property investor and a deal packager. You're welcome, David, to our program today. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> we really appreciate being, being here. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> I'm just going to do a short introduction. Um, David has built a multi-million pound property portfolio with vast experience gained over five property circles and a deal packaging business that regularly turns over in excess of six figures a year. <laughs> it's one of the property guru. So by the way, I all my property training was on, uh, I got everything from progressive property and that's where I met this charming, charming, charming mentor. <laughs> David is an entrepreneur is a serial podcaster, is a property investor, is a mentor, and is also an author. You're welcome again, David. <laughs> wow, what an introduction. I mean, <laughs> it's, is that really me? I'm sitting here listening to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, property, property's been instrumental in my life, been a big part of my life. Uh, but the thing is, it all happened by accident, Shola, mm. uh, really. That's how it started. Right. Um, the power of property owning property over time mm. uh, just changes lives so if anyone's watching this and they're looking to change lives their life in the medium to long term you know property mm. is just the coolest way to do it in my view in your view okay yeah. can you um take us a little bit into your journey yeah how you started property yeah yeah so um it started by accident in terms mm. of property okay yeah. so um i went to university came out in 77 with a law degree and i was going to be a lawyer i'm going to go to law and my dad got hold of me and, and tempted me shola with the promise of an easier pound than going to the law <laughs> and um he yeah, was you know it was up to me here's the thing you can look back and say that's a We've all got crossroads in our lives, and maybe that was a crossroad moment. Yeah. Uh, so I went into the family business, which was retail. We did retail at that point. Uh, but what happened was, occasionally along the road, we were offered to buy the buildings from which we traded. So we got up to about 20 retail units. Right. And of the 20, landlords basically came to us. <laughs> I didn't go looking for it five six times over the years okay. and gave us the opportunity to buy the building and wow. i didn't didn't know what i was doing mm. um i paid too much um i didn't understand how to run a property business but i did know the one thing i did know yes. was that owning property was a good thing and mm -hmm. it, it 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 strengthened your balance sheet and you look better to the bank if they wanted to lend money and mm -hmm. so i knew it was a good thing Right. Right. Yeah. I, I have no knowledge at all. I'll tell you how little knowledge mm. I had, Charlotte. And you, you, this will resonate with you, and I hope your listeners, because you, you, you've done a lot of property training, right? Yeah. Um, we built a, we bought, forgive me, purchased a big building in 1978 with retail on the ground floor, and it had three floors of offices above. Okay. 1978, yeah. this was, and we never used the offices. In fact, we just stuff put stuff up there for storage you know <coughs> I, I never went up there unless you know the rain was coming in and it was working its way down and it was mm -hmm. just uh, inconvenient to me and it took me 20 years it was 1907 uh, 1997 now 1997 mm -hmm. yeah. before I realized I should convert those offices into flats right. and we converted them into three flats which of course transformed first of all the income from the property, and secondly, um, mm. the value of the property. Right. So in 1997, I went to all my properties looking for places I could make flats. You know? mm. And um, that, was, that was instrumental in me yeah. focusing more on property than I was on clothing, which was our retail business. Oh, and I okay. Sort of, I sort of swerved, moved away from clothing. Oh, clothing had got really difficult. Um, in, and ultimately, that trading company went into liquidation, but not the property. Not company. the property. Okay. Okay. 
And then in 2004, I went to Manchester. I live in Brighton, everyone watching. Um, and my friend came and he said, Dave, you've got to come to Manchester. It's called the property market in Manchester. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going. He said, why don't you go? I said, well, it's north. You know, I don't want to. I've seen it on the television. Mm. Okay, Coronation Street. No, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he dragged me kicking and streaming up the M6 motorway. <laughs> And um, I was there for about 45 minutes right. before I got the hang of it. Huh. And uh, Shola, there's an um, old school estate agent. They're still there. They've got several offices called Taylor and Wood in Ashton Underline. Mm. And we were going to visit the shop. It was there, big double fronted shop. And as we're walking towards the shop, these two guys roll out of the shop onto the pavement yeah. and they're having a fist fight. Mm. Having a fight, yeah. So we, we sort of stepped around them, you know, went into the shop, you know, said the what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, well, what's happened is, um, the gentleman on the bottom he bid 40,000 pounds for a house, and the gentleman on top offered 41,000 pounds. So, um, they've stepped outside to sort it out in their own way. And I thought, Well, this sounds fun, you know. Um, 41,000 pound that's houses, mm. you know, that's um, in those days, you know, that's life was very different then, mortgage yeah. was very available, and, mm. and we started buying these things like Kit Kats, you know, like today you buy a Kit Kat, we were buying houses on the phone, yeah, self certification yeah. mortgages, day mm. one re mortgages, and all, all, all that sort of technical stuff, which basically meant you could buy a house for a tiny, 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 tiny little mm, uh, mm. deposit. Um, and then 2008 came and everything stopped. Everything stopped. I stopped. The recession. The yeah, the financial mm. unpleasantness, whatever it was. And then I sat around. That was my first retirement, Shola. I stayed <laughs> at home for four and a half years. <laughs> it, it, it didn't suit me. I got very bored. Mm. And then in 2014, I went to Peterborough. I kept getting these emails. You've been there, Shola. Yes. I kept getting these emails, these young yeah. guys. Yeah. And I went to my first event at Progressive Property in Peterborough, mm -hmm. uh, where ultimately I met you. Um, and I thought, wow, this is this is great. This is great. And, you know, I did a bit of training. And then I thought, actually, what I want, Shola, actually, I want mm -hmm. to be on the stage talking about this stuff. Ah. And then we know. So um, I had no idea, but two years after I went to that first event and saw Rob Moore, this very smart young man in his stripy mm. shirt, presenting, two years later, I was presenting that event on behalf of Rob Moore on the stage. So that was me. And that's, you know, strange how life sort of kicks you in one direction. In one or the direction other. or the other, yeah. So over the recent time I've, my focus has been more on trying to help people which this might be relevant for your listeners yeah. help people who want to get into property yes. don't know how to do it mm. are fearful fearful exactly. of how you know how to yeah. get involved mm -hmm. and um find it difficult some people find it difficult some people find it easy yeah um you found it easier than most shola you personally um i like the way that you've gone about it <laughs> um Thank you. <laughs> well, we might come back to that. You're only at the start of the journey. I get that, right? But you're going to be, you've got, you've got it, whatever it is, you've got it. Um, and then we're here this afternoon. So how cool is this? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that part of your journey with us and all the audience and the, and the people listening and, and watching us um, this program. So I, I personally, um, going through your profile, I know, well, I'm not going to say, but I know you own quite a few hundreds of properties. And I know one of your strategy. <laughs> well, I think, there's not a hundred. No, I think we, I need to pick up. There's not hundreds uh, of properties, right? Dozens, maybe, but not hundreds. <laughs> um, I think the important thing 
is it produces enough money on a monthly basis it does yeah for me not to have I, when i get out of bed in the morning all my mm -hmm. bills necessary to maintain my standard of living very modest though it is yeah <laughs> um are paid right before i do anything else mm. and that's the position over time i've got into so whether that's 10 grand a month, 15 grand a month, 20 mm. grand a month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the, the deal sourcing I did on top of that because yes. I got into deal sourcing because I didn't want any more properties show up. I know that sounds a bit weird, but we're all different. Yes. Um, how many houses do you need? Do you right? need yes. Um, my mum was a bit surprised when I needed more than one, but yeah, she kind of gets it now. Mm. Um so I didn't want any more houses, but I was still getting all these leads in, but from my contacts, right? Mm, mm. So I just helped other investors to get going. To get going. And in return for that, I took a fee. So that the six-figure income mm. that you referred to in my introduction from yes, sourcing from and selling sourcing. deals, yeah, depends how hard I work, you see, because Shola, that six figures is a pretty broad figure. It could be a hundred grand, could be. could be 999 grand, right? Mm. And I've, I've been between the two over the years, depending on how hard I want to work. Mm, mm, it's all, there's mm, always a market for mm, it. Once you mm, know your trade, yes. you can ramp it up or ramp it down. So in recent years, you you will be aware. I've been working with a couple of smart people in yes. Peterborough. Mm. Uh, we know Katie. We know well two others. Yeah. And um, I haven't worked very hard. You know, they've done all the work. <laughs> and I've got a share. How cool is that? Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> so um regarding your journey into property that you've shared with us, uh, did you encounter any challenges at all? Yes. Yes. There are challenges. Okay. And I think this is a really important question because. Over the past four, five, six years, I've been trying to help other people build their property business. Mm -hmm. And it's the way they respond to the challenges. So it's not about the challenges. So the challenges might not be, might be, you've not got any money. Mm -hmm. You haven't got the knowledge. Yes. Uh, you don't know, understand when you're going to do a viewing what you're looking at, right? Yes. You don't know the difference between a, um, a, an assisted sale and a purchase lease option, technical. Mm -hmm. Stuff, mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you've got someone to guide you through that you can yes. you can you can deal with all that stuff that's not the difficult stuff the difficult stuff is i don't think people believe in their dream they're not mm. committed to it they haven't in their heart or wherever it is yes got that drive and determination mm. so if you go back to 2004 when i i started as an amateur deal sourcer yeah because that's mm -hmm. why i didn't do it properly till i went yeah. to progress it okay um I, but i walked the streets looking for houses show that i was marketing 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 the whole time right and i i struggle to understand but mm. i accept it because i yeah. see it every day mm. people who won't pick the phone up and speak to estate agents and if you spoke to them yesterday, why don't you speak to them again today? You know, they, so long as they enjoy the process of speaking with you, mm, you know, mm, mm. Uh, it, it, it it brightens their day, you know. And there's business there. And if you're committed to a property business, and it is a business, yes, then why not do that? And and I've thought long and hard about why it is that people give up, because people give up yes and they deserve better than that but mm. i think it's because in their heart they don't believe it they're not committed they're not they're not they'll tell you they'll say that oh yeah i want a big property business do they really you know and when things don't go well when deals fall through mm. when banks down value your property so the deal is like trashed and someone's got to put more money in mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then there's an overspend on a refurb and all these things happen it does yes yes they say oh i'm not doing that again that was terrible i had to somebody get cost somebody some money well you know investors generally are pretty wise people and they understand this um you've got you've got to absorb all that and make sure you know you get on top of it next time 
Yes, yes, that's true. That's very true. One difficulty is that um, people that really want to get into business, some, uh, into property, sometimes want to do it. As you rightly said, they don't. They think you have to have the money to start. Yep. And sometimes they think they don't have the knowledge to start. Yeah. I found people sometimes they don't have the knowledge quite all right, but then they don't still want to spend the money, <laughs> so someone else can source for them or. Yep go and get the education is there any way around that because to me i don't think there is any way it's either you get educated you know it or then you employ the expertise of somebody that knows it to do it for you i don't know your view um i i uh, was completely liberated by uh property education remembering at that point that i started to educate myself Yes. rather than mm -hmm. you know learn on my own making my own mistakes yeah um i've probably been i've been in the game at that point by 25 years plus right yes and i went to that event in 2014 and mm -hmm. this is not an advert for that event no um but I, suddenly there's all these people walking across the stage telling what they know mm -hmm. and i don't know anything about that i, sure. I went there thinking oh I'm a property investor. I know a huge, these people can't teach me anything, right? And what became apparent, Shola, was I did know a huge amount about a very small part of the property business. Right. And there's all this other stuff going on. Mm. I mean, service accommodation, okay? Yeah. That, that event in 2014 that I went to, the first one, nobody even mentioned service accommodation. It wasn't even on the map now i know people in brighton because i live in brighton mm. who have been doing furnished holiday lets for 30 years right, right. Mm. but it became suddenly this last five seven years it's become really hot hot but nobody mentioned it in 2014 mm. and the stuff they did mention i thought i didn't know you could do that i didn't know we could i thought i mm -hmm. thought you had to save a deposit go to mm -hmm. a bank get mm -hmm. a mortgage right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a slow way of doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does yeah, that answer your question? It does, it normal, does. Mm. Forgive me. Normally the objections are, I haven't got the knowledge, I haven't got the money, yeah. I haven't got the time. Yes. But that's all yes. an excuse, the time one. Okay. Mm. Um, and actually you can get the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if you work with people who have got the knowledge, that's a mm -hmm. shortcut. Mm -hmm. And you can get the money so long as, and you're you're really good at this. Um, if you market yourself as who you are, you've got yeah. to be honest, mm -hmm. right, and open. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but show people the journey that you're on. Exactly, people yeah. will, will come to you. True, very true, very true. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've actually inspired a lot of people already <laughs> with what you've just said. Um, I would just like to ask one question. From your journey up to now, if you look back, I'm sure there will be one or two things that makes you smile and makes you think, yes, I've done the right thing. One or two things that make me stop. Well, the <laughs> smile, okay, the smile thing is very important because <laughs> if you've got to get up in the morning, and go and mm -hmm. do something right yes yeah you've got to enjoy you have to enjoy it you yeah. have to mm -hmm. and if you if it's if it pains you if you're in your head you can't you can't bring yourself to get out of bed if you if if you you're heading off to work and you, you're struggling to put one foot in front of the other and i've been there mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. not for some time but i have been there almost heroic to drag yourself into whatever else whatever it is that you, yeah. you have to do yes to generate some income mm -hmm. then that's not a life in my view you've got to find a better way and if nothing else show that you know in our little part of the property world we have a bit of fun right and we yeah. do enjoy it and things go wrong right and yes, but yeah. we pick yeah. each other up and mm. we we motivate each other and help each other oh that happened to me in 1981 this is how you do it deal yeah. with it right yeah yeah um yeah. so you know smile is good now um <laughs> do i sit back and look at you know sit in the bath and open my banking app you know <laughs> does that make me smile <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, well, I have to admit, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's much better not to have to worry about that stuff sure. than it is having to worry about that stuff. But okay. do, do you know what? what? Having a bit of stuff, and I don't want to mm. overblow it because there's yes. people much more wealthy probably watching this, much more wealthy than I am. It brings its own problems. It brings different problems if you do have mm -hmm. money, right? Yeah. So if you've got money today, when we're recording this, yeah, what do you do? What do you do with it? Is it safe? Where do you put it? Is the high street bank safe? And if you put it in the bank, you're not going to get any interest on it at all. Mm. And inflation is five, six, seven, twenty-eight percent, whatever it is today. So the value of your money is going to go down. Just mm. leaving it in the bank. Right, mm -hmm. the real value. So it's another worry, isn't it? What do you what do you do with your money to look after it? So I was taught, and I believe that the more you advance, let's put it that way. Let's say you are going forward. If we're moving yeah. forward with our mm -hmm. dreams, you just get different problems. It's it's not problem free. The, the world contrives to give you a different problem, and you have to. It, it's to make you grow. Because if you stop everything, mm. so at the moment you're aware, your listeners are not, that I've kind of stopped and I'm just sitting, scratching my head, looking for what to do next, property-wise, whatever, or maybe unconnected with property, but mm -hmm. I've moved away from speaking and training. Um, and I did seven years. That was, you know, fair old stint. Sure. Um, I'm acutely aware that I do have to do something because if you stop and you you just freeze and everything slows down slow and you, down. Yeah. you sort of putrefy and mm. pass. You know, mm -hmm. So you've got to keep going. You've got to keep sure. going and doing something. I think that's sure. really important. What sure. my next something is, I don't know yet. But you I'll don't know it. what your next something is? Okay. <laughs> there will be a something. Of course. You always have something, David. That one yeah. I know for sure. <laughs> Does that help, though? Does that it does, it help? does. Yes, it does, it does, it does, it does, it does. Um, can you share some tips for those that want to go into property? Yeah, definitely. The quickest way, the quickest way for you to move forward in property is to get yourself connected mm -hmm. to people who have done what you want to do Sure. and get have already got what you want to get mm -hmm. right that is the quickest way so i am um a huge believer in masterminds round tables for 30 years Shola, i was pretty much on my own um right. there, there wasn't property education there wasn't if there was i couldn't i didn't know where it was there wasn't mm -hmm. there wasn't there wasn't networking Mm -hmm. uh anywhere and i was pretty much on my own and i was talking to myself right and if you talk to yourself for 30 years you go a bit weird you know it's not cool um <laughs> the, the quickest way forward in my experience yeah. is to sit down with people who know how to do what you want to do because they've already done yeah. it sure, or have yeah. got whatever it is it might be a house it might be a million pound it might be a car it might be whatever mm. and and they pull you up so i joined a quite a high level mastermind at progressive okay so my, my heroes and mentors in that room mm. and I, I was i was probably the smallest business you know in the in the room mm. um <clears throat> i don't think they've sussed me out yet channel and um they drag you up and also, what a joy, what a joy to be able to pick the phone up and ring them up. Ring, that's true. Email that's them, true. message them. They, mm. everyone, everyone's got their own preferred way of communication. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Um, that's the quickest way. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, that's all very well, David, but I don't know anyone. Who do I know that I can mm. connect with? Yeah. Well, you know Shola, or you wouldn't be listening, right? <laughs> And she is your conduit, your entrance into this world that, you know, we both discovered her more recently, me, since 2014. <laughs> and there are people there that can help you, okay? I mean, you've got to be wise. You've got to weigh people up. You've got to 
think about who it is that you're mixing with but sure that's the fastest way because um yes do you need education yes mm. but do you have to wait until you've got the education no, no. probably not yes right yeah. if you've got if you've got access to somebody you know if you message me and say david i can't I've, how does this work david mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me, we've had these conversations you tell me yeah yeah, yeah. definitely um <laughs> and i i would say to you well what i would do is i do this and that and that and this mm. but you know mm. let's see how that goes right that's all you need because it's not rocket science property is basically arithmetic that's all it is you know you need more money coming in than you've got going out that's it and if it, you've got the cash flow to keep you secure at any time over time especially surely you're in london london and the southeast we know we know right that over time property prices are going to go up and you're going to be extremely wealthy mm, if you mm. can live long enough exactly mm, mm, yeah mm, so mm. my very first mentor said david success at property is as easy as falling off a log and i thought really really yes yeah, exactly. the secret is you've got to stay on the log long enough that's the secret ah, okay so so despite what we experienced we should just endure and you know go on and continue doing it until yes yes but what you we can't want. fail you mm. can't fail if you keep going the only way you can fail yeah and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm looking at your face on the screen as well because it's irrelevant to you it right? is relevant to me definitely the only way you can fail is if you stop everyone goes at their own pace it's not a race it's not no. a race no, but no. If you stop, mm. nothing, and it doesn't have to be property or anything. Anything. You know? mm. If you stop, it's just not going to happen. True, true. Oh, true. and one other thing, Sheldon. One other thing's come to me. Can I share okay. this? I'm, yes, sure. I'm aware, I'm aware of the time. Some people try something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, they get, you know, two miles down the road, and they think, no, this isn't working right mm, so they go mm. back to the beginning and they try something else they go two miles down that road right mm -hmm. yeah and then they think no this isn't right either i can't go, go, go back right so they go back again right if they'd stayed on the first road and mm -hmm. gone the third mile and the fourth mile and the fifth mile yes it, it would have worked Shabba. people well, give up to you wow wow what a candid advice you've just given now because that actually resonates with me <laughs> sometimes i want to try something sometimes and i just think oh i'm doing this thing in six months now it's not working do i just do something else but yeah <laughs> it's six months you can't even have a baby in six months Shabba. i mean what can you build in six months okay you can get started on the journey yes right? but i've done gosh is it 44 years is it really 44 years <laughs> What am I going to do? When did it all go? I don't know. <laughs> 44 years. Oh my goodness. Oh mm. my goodness. Well, it shows, it shows all it shows all around you the wisdom. <laughs> only, only born from bitter <laughs> bad experience and poor decisions, right? Yeah. But hey, the, the thing is I can I can catch people now. You know, mm, mm, mm. you know, stop them making that that fall to the bottom. You know. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for sharing all this candid advice and tips with us today. We really appreciate it. But before you go, please, David, can you motivate my viewers out there to get going and get something done? Like you said, a lot of them want to do something. They try and then they stop. So if you can just motivate them, please. Yeah, I, th I think it's very simple. Mm. I really do. I think you have to dream your dream. Sure. And you might be sitting there thinking, what's he talking about dreams for? I want cash. Dreams don't give me cash in the <laughs> till. I want, I want cash. <laughs> okay, but if it's not your dream, you won't keep going. You have to prevail. You have to keep moving forward. And whether it's property or it's stocks and shares or Bitcoin or whatever, 
right? Whatever it is, mm. you have to persevere. So dream your dream. And if you're not dreaming big enough, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. It, it's not enough, mm. right? So I, as you can see from what's behind me, I'm a really keen golfer. And, and let me borrow something from there. So Jack Nicholas is the greatest of all time. He's got 18 major championships, whatever that means. Okay. Mm, mm. And Tiger Woods, when he was 12 years old, was interviewed on the television because he was a prodigy. And he, right. they asked him, what, what's your ambition, Tiger? And he mm-hmm. said, I want to win more majors than Jack Nicholas." Right, 12 years old. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he got to 14. So I knew, I knew when that kid, 12 years old, said he wanted to beat Jack to 18, right? Jack had 18. Yeah. He wanted more than 18. I knew that Tiger would do between 12 and 18, right? Mm-hmm. I knew it because he, me- he meant it, right? And he got to 14. Tiger got to 14. And here's the truth. This is the point, right? It doesn't matter if it's golf or anything else. Yeah. If Jack had won 50 majors, Mm -hmm. Tiger would have got 35. Because he had the dream. He had the dream, yeah. And he's only got 14 and stopped at 14 because Jack had 80. And 14 for him is enough. And nobody else is anywhere near those two guys. That's very true. That's very true. So I think the one bit of advice, dream it big. Dream it big. I was sitting with Grant Cardone. I was on a special round table with Grant Cardone at the O2 with a progressive property at the big event there for two days. Yeah. And we were sitting in a, in, in, um, a room at the top of mm. the, uh, the hotel. And we look across the Thames, and the, I think it's the HSBC building. Right. Across the, and Grant Cardone said to me, what you ought to do, what you ought to do, and get your daughter involved now, because, you know, you're a bit older, but she's got years. Yeah. See that building there with HSBC mm. on it? I said, yeah. He said, you ought to see that every day in your mind with David Siegler on it. <laughs> yeah, I laughed. Okay. <laughs> okay. that, so only if, if you only get halfway there, what's the problem? What's the problem? Mm, 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 mm. So that's what I would advise. Sort out what your dream is. Mm-hmm. And then pursue it mercilessly. But unless it's really your dream, you won't. So basically, we should not and cannot pursue someone else's dream. No, you can't. Mm. It's got to come, got to come from here. From the heart. Thank you so much, David, for coming on our show today. I'm sure you've inspired so many people out there. You've particularly inspired me today. Um, some of your advice. They resonate with me. Not even some. All of it resonates with me. It's like I've, you've come onto the show to speak to me directly, personally, and I'll say thank you so much. Thank you That's for coming right. on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the inv- invitation, Shola. You and I will continue to speak. I'm sure. Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.